Good morning and welcome to Thursday Morning Prayer from Community Presbyterian Church in Payson, Arizona. This is Thursday, July 1st, 2021. I'm Reverend Linda Westcott, a retired Presbyterian minister who attends the church here in Payson, and I invite you to join with me today in some verses of scripture and prayer for our nation as we look forward to this year's Independence Day celebration. But as we celebrate once again our country's declaration of its independence from being subjects of the British monarch King George III, as people of faith we might want to remember not only our independence from a long gone king, but our dependence, and that is on God, who was and is always with us, and whose power is greater than any king who has ever ruled on this earth. But unfortunately, in today's world, God doesn't have as much say in the realm of politics and secular culture. So I invite you today to join with me in words of scripture and in the offering of some much needed prayers in behalf of our country and its people. So let's get settled in, get comfortable, relax and ponder for a quiet moment what dependence on God means to us and to our country these days. Our opening sentences are from Psalm 24, 7 through 10, from the New Revised Standard Version Bible. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And from Psalm 85, 8 and 9, let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in, in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Our opening prayer today comes from the words of the renowned preacher, the Reverend Dr. Peter Marshall, about our liberty. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thou who art the way, the truth, and the life, hear us as we pray for the truth that shall make us free. Teach us that liberty is not only to be loved, but also to be lived. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried in books. It costs too much to be hoarded. Help us to see that our liberty is not the right to do as we please, but the opportunity to do what is right. Amen. In Isaiah 12, verses 2 through 6, we read from the New Revised Standard Version Bible, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, 
Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great is in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. And now we will hear an interesting rendering of the Apostle Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 2, 6 through 10. But uh, this is from the Message Bible, which you may not be as familiar with, but it, it kind of gives uh, some new meaning to to um, some of our, our scriptures. And um, so chapter 2, 6 through 10. <clears throat> from the Apostle Paul. My counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You received Christ Jesus the Master. Now live him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying the subject and start living it and let your living spill over into thanksgiving. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him. So you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. When you come to him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. <clears throat> and now let us pray. God bless America, bless us with freedom. And as a country, renew our faith in you. We ask for guidance and wisdom for our leaders, that they might speak truth and not hide behind falsehood for their own benefits. As a nation and its people, may we be grounded in virtue, guided by your spirit, and by the example and teaching of Jesus Christ. Deliver us from overindulgence and greed and the quest for power while unmindful of the needs of others. And in the midst of ever more and more violence, mean-spirited rhetoric and divisiveness, may we hear your voice telling us what is required for peace and justice in our communities where people of different opinions and beliefs in a civil manner might speak respectfully with others, listening to one another, and thereby gaining some understanding of our differences. We pray also for our firefighters that you would keep them safe as they battle the fires and save homes in our area. And we thank you for all who have reached out to those evacuated, offering them food and shelter as you, Jesus, would want us to, a safe place to stay, and even taking them into their homes. Lord, bless us with a heart of caring that we might 
reach out with love and compassion to neighbors everywhere, promoting peace and harmony in our world. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we hear a little bit about the um, restoration we may need in our country uh, when it comes to how we deal with others and um, <clears throat> how our churches reach out to others. Psalm 85, 4, and 6 speaks of restoration. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? And a verse of an old hymn says it well. Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. And now please join me in the saying of the Lord's Prayer and in whatever um, rendering of it that you are most familiar with, um, we can all just say it our own ways. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now receive the benediction of the Lord from the Good News Translation of the Bible. May the Lord bless and take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And from Psalm 33, verse 12, Blessed is the nation where God is the Lord. Amen. Amen.